Today's topic is the heresies amongst us, all right? It's not going to be long because we got to get ready for the bishop, but we're going to deal with a few things. So, yes, take out your Bibles, your apocryphas, your pens, your pencils. Pay attention. Uh, who can tell me why must heresies be amongst us? All right. Who's, who's reading? Losias. Yes, sir. You got it? Let's go. First Corinthians. Chapter 11 and verse 19. Come on. For there must be also heresies among you. It says there must be also heresies among you. Read. That they which are approved may be made manifest among you. Right. So they which are approved must be uh, may be made manifest among you. So how are you going to know if you're approved or not? How would you know? That's another question. How would you know if you're approved? Um, because you're going to be rooted in the scriptures, you're going to know that a heresy is coming because you're going to study and know that um, that's not according to the uh, gospel that we are learning every day and night. Okay, that's correct. You would study and you would know, but what would you do when it arises? You would um, bring it to the attention of the leadership. Yeah, you would You would check it. You wouldn't let it spread. Yes, sir. That's correct. You understand that? That's the correct answer right there. All right, so let's do this. I've heard a few things. So apparently, I'm not saying it's everybody. All right. If anybody has any questions, too, we're here to clear up any confusion. How let me let me ask you like this. Who thinks that we can sell in the school when it's not the Sabbath? Who thinks that we can sell in the school when it's not the Sabbath? Show of hands. Show, sisters, you too. Y'all got to get the kingdom, too. Is anybody confused on the question? Say, like, do that. Okay, so, okay, check it out. Let's just say it was Monday because we have a double Sabbath, right? Monday means it's over. It's not a Sabbath. If we open up the school to sell in the school, can we do that? All right, put your hands up. Keep, keep them up, please. Keep them up. Now, put them down. See, now they're going to be, see, now they're going to be scared. Who thinks that we cannot sell in the school. Show of hands. You're brand new, okay. Keep it up, keep it up. Anybody else? Young man right there. Okay, all right, bet. So now, what are we gonna do? We're gonna go to the scriptures and see what the scriptures say, right? Let God be true, every man of what? All right, y'all all right, y'all awake today. Let's go to the book of 1 Peter chapter five. All right, let's do that. 1 Peter chapter five. We start at verse 1. Watch this. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 1. Come on. The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder mm -hmm. and a witness of the sufferings of Christ. Come on. And also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. All right. So he says he's a elder in the church. All right. He also exhorts the other leaders in the church. All right. Because he's uh, endured the sufferings of Christ. All right, being ship, uh, shipwrecked, all right, being stoned, being persecuted, you understand, so on and so on. Read on. Verse 2, feed the flock of God which is among you. So it says to the overseers, to the elders of these congregations, to feed the flock. Read it again from the top, verse 2. Feed the flock of God Come on. which is among you, uh -huh. taking the oversight thereof, uh -huh. not by constraint. Not by constraint. But willingly. But willingly, meaning what? We can't force anybody to do anything. Okay? We can remind you about the Sabbath day. We can tell you the importance of the new moons, the high holy days, about wearing fringes, all of that. But we cannot force you to keep the commandments of God. Can't do that. Read on. But willingly. Not for filthy lucre. Not for what? Filthy lucre. But not for filthy lucre. Who knows what filthy lucre is? Let me hear uh, Brother Abijah. Shalom, leadership. Shalom. Uh, filthy lucre is uh, ill-gotten gains. Ill gains. Evil gains. That's, that's correct. That's correct. All right. Uh, making merchandise of the people. That's, that's what that is. Okay? Read verse 2 all the way through again. Verse 2. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Verse 3. Neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in, in samples to the flock. All right, now let's go to Titus. Let's go to the book of Titus, chapter 1. 
and verse 7. I'm going to go to Titus chapter 1 and verse 7. Titus chapter 1 and verse 7. All right, give them a sec. Let them get there and let them write down the scripture. All right. Okay, so we're starting with the leaders of the church first. All right. All right, read what you got. Titus chapter 1 and verse 7. Uh huh. For a bishop must be blameless as the steward of God. Not self-willed. Right, because remember we just left off and Peter says of a ready mind. A ready mind means you're ready to take instruction. Although you are a leader, you are not the leader. You understand? They don't understand. I'd say this, for example, me. Yes, I'm the leader of this congregation, but I am not the leader of IUIC. You understand? So certain protocols are in place that I have to adhere by. You understand that? Okay, let's read on. Not self-willed, not soon angry. Not soon angry, come on. Not given to wine. Not a drunkard, not angry to the point he does something crazy, read. No striker. Not a striker, not using his hands, read. Not given to filthy lucre. And not given to filthy lucre. Once again, that filthy lucre is going into what? Evil or ill gain. Okay, read on. Verse 8. But. A lover of hospitality. Uh huh. A lover of good men. Read. Sober, just, holy, temperate. Come on. Holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. Right. So, leaders, they got to be able to exhort one another to do good and defend the gospel out on the streets. You understand? They got to be able to do all of that. They got to be given the hospitality. All right. Read on. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. Right. The reason why the leaders got to be on point is because there's always a nigga in the midst. Y'all all right? Okay. Okay. Remember, we're talking about heresies must be amongst us. There's always, no matter what, no matter how much good times we could be having, there's always a Negro in the midst talking some stuff that they're not supposed to be saying. It's always going to be there. And we know, we see you. You understand? We just hope you repent before the final judgment. You understand? We get that. Some people come in talking and they change. But some people do that till death. You understand? Read on. Verse 11. Whose mouths must be stopped. Come on. Who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. For filthy lucre's sake. So. Let's go to Mark. Let's go to the book of Mark, chapter 11, and I want verse 15. So understand this. Understand this. It's about the leader, okay, adhering to the scriptures, not in it for himself, you understand, but he's in it for the people, not to make gain out for the people, to be hospitable, so on and so on. All right, let's go to Mark 11, what I call 15. Yes, sir. All right, watch this. Watch this. Mark. Chapter 11 and verse 15. Uh huh. And they come to Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple. Right. So Christ came into the temple, and he saw them what? Buying and selling in the temple. Okay, read on. And overthrew the tables of the money changers. Uh huh. And the seats of them that sold doves. And the seats of them that sold what? Doves. All right. So who wants to take a crack at it? What were they doing in that temple? <clears throat> Shalom, leadership. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I believe I got it this time. They were um, they were exchanging uh, money, but they were the people. The people um, when they they were exchanging money, but at a uh, an unfair rate. When when the people came to Jerusalem. They were exchanging their money. Uh, it's like when you go, when you go falsifying balances. Fal right, right. Like, like when extortion. You go, basically. Yes. Very good. Very, very, very good. All right. Read that verse again. Verse fifteen. Mm -hmm. And they come to Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple, and overthrew the tables of the money ch changers. And the seats of them that sold doves. Come on. And would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. Mm -hmm. And he taught, saying unto them, It is not written 
My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer. Come on. But ye have made it a den of thieves. That's how you know they was falsifying the balance. They were stealing from the people, falsifying the balances for filthy lucre, say for their pockets. Now, let me ask you, when we do fundraisers, is that for our pockets? No, it's not for our pockets. It's to keep the doors open. It's to print flyers. It's for food for the feast days. It's to put up billboards in different cities to spread this truth. You understand? So is, any, is anybody confused on that? Now, give me Colossians 2.8 real quick. Give me Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. All right, watch this. And also, remember, he says selling doves. That those doves represented what? Let me see who's thinking. Uh, Brother Josiah. Fruit flies. Hey, shalom, leadership. Shalom. Uh, those, those represent uh, sacrifice. Exactly. Going into sacrifice. Going into sacrifice. Give me Colossians 2 8. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. Watch this. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Right. It says, Beware lest any man spoil, spoil you through philosophy and deceit. The philosophy and vain deceit that they were trying to destroy you by was what? Trying to tell you to stop believing on Christ and start sacrificing again. Why? Because the priests, guess what they got? They got paid. They got paid off of that. Okay? Under Christ, no, that's the free gift. You understand? We, we go to the Father in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, and he makes the atonement. He's that sacrificial lamb. But the Pharisees and the scribes, they didn't want that because once Christ came on the scene, what happened? He, he made them broke. He took all of that money out of their pockets. Finish that in Mark. Go back to Mark, and I want verse 18. Mark chapter 11, verse 18. Let's hear what the, uh, what the Pharisees and the scribes said pertaining to that. Mark. Chapter 11 and verse 18. Watch this. And the scribes and chief priests heard it and saw how they might destroy him. You see that? As soon as they heard that Christ went in there and taught him the right way, they tried to destroy him. Why? Because he took money out of their pockets. Now, give me uh, James 2. Watch this. Give me James, the second chapter. So when you get here, you can have a better understanding of why it says this in James and when you read Paul's epistles. Give me James 2 and start at verse 1. Watch this. The book of James, chapter 2 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons? For if there come unto you your assembly a man with a gold ring. Right, so somebody comes to your assembly, meaning your congregation, okay, with a gold ring, read, in goodly apparel, mm -hmm. and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment. Come on. And ye have respect to him that weareth the, the gay clothing. That's the nice clothing, read. And say unto him, sit thou here in a good place. Why, why would the leader of the congregation say, sit thou here in a good place? Why would he say that? Just say it. Because he got money. He wants some of that money. You understand? Scripture's telling us not to be like that. All right. In, okay, we'll go to the next next thing. Everybody understand? We all we all good on sisters, sisters, sisters. Can't hit. Oh, okay, okay. All praises, all praises. Go ahead. Let me get a preset. Uh, give me um, Amos chapter eight verse five to go into that um, falsifying the balance. Read that for me. Amos chapter eight and verse five. Saying, when will the new moon be gone that we may sell corn? Who do you think saying uh, those statements? Brothers. Yeah, they're saying, when will the new moon be gone? Because in their mindset, someone who have a filthy lucre mindset, they're all about sell gain, things that they could do to gain benefit from the body. When will the new moon be gone? Read. And the Sabbath that we may set forth wheat, making the ephah small, and the shekel great, and falsifying the balances by deceit. You see, fa um, uh, 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 falsifying the balance by deceit, meaning nothing that they're doing is upright. They're doing things that benefit them. 
and uh, clear uh, di uh, uh, distinction, like I mentioned, between that and what we're doing, we're not doing this for ourselves. And you could see the works of, of where the things that we do here, where they go. You know, that's how you know the difference. Uh, someone who have the filthy lucre spirit, you could tell because they're going to get, uh, their pocket will get deep while the church needed stuff. All right. All right. All praise. So we touch that. Okay. I heard that. All right. So we shouldn't hear it anymore, right? And if you hear it, what you should do? Yeah. Yeah. Check them. Check them. And if he repent, boom. If he don't, take it on up. You understand? Because, you know, sometimes people just speak out of ignorance, you know? How will you know if you try? Say, hey, bro, that's not right. So I didn't know that. But if they keep pushing it, then you know something else. All right? All right. Let me see. Fellowshipping at home. Here's another one. This is a new doctrine. It's a new doctrine that I've come to my ears and said it's, it's okay to not come and fellowship with your brothers and sisters, but it's okay to fellowship at home by yourself. All right. So let's see what the Bible says about it. Let's do the poll. We have to do the poll first. Okay? You got to do the poll. Always got to do the poll. So, according to the Bible, who believes that we have to physically, meaning I can do that, physically touch Officer Joe Will? He's real. I'm not looking at him through my computer. Yeah, I could do this. I say, hey, fix that, and it moves. See that? You understand? I can physically do that. Who believes, according to the Bible, that you have to physically congregate? Show of hands. Show of hands. Show of hands, show of hands, okay. Okay, all right, put them down, put them down, put them down. According to the Bible, who does not believe you have to physically congregate? According to the Bible. All right, no hands, all right. Well, that's all right. We're still gonna go to scriptures because, uh, what does it say? Let God be true. Every land of life. So we have to go to the Bible because we hear these things. So we gotta make sure as leaders and overseers, we cast it down. Now, do things happen like you get a flat tire? Yes. Do you get sick? Yes. Right. Are we talking about that? No. We're not talking about that. When you're physically, financially able to fellowship, that's what you should do, right? All right. All right, let's go to um first one. Second, as no, I'll drop that. Go to Joel 1 and 14. I like this one. It's one of my favorite ones right here. Joel chapter 1, verse 14. All right, because it gives us the total breakdown on how things should look when we come together as one. Okay, watch this. The book of Joel, chapter 1 and verse 14. Come on. Sanctify ye a fast, call a solemn assembly. Call a solemn assembly, a holy gathering together. Read. Gather the elders. The elders. Gather the elders. Come on. And all the inhabitants of the land. Some of the inhabitants of the land. All the inhabitants of the land. All the inhabitants of the land. And to the house of the Lord your God. And to the house of the Lord your God. That would be known as what we're in, a little sanctuary that we're in right now. What is that, uh, Ezekiel eleven sixteen? 16? Yes, Read that real quick. Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 16. Okay. Ezekiel chapter 11 and verse 16. Mm -hmm. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, although I have cast them far off among the heathen. Right. So God understands that we are not all in the same land anymore like it used to be. Remember in Joel, we just read all the people of the land, right? But now he's saying, read this again. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God. Although I have cast them far off from among the heathen. Right. So God knows exactly where we're located today. He knows we're not all together anymore. Read. And although I have scattered them among the countries, uh -huh. yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary in the countries. Right. So even though I've cast you away, I put the spirit on certain leaders to do what? To build these sanctuaries so you can still keep the commandments, the solemn assemblies. Right. Uh. From there, uh, Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23. Then I'm going to go to Acts. I'm going to go to Acts 1. Give me Leviticus 23. I want 1 through 3. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23 and verse 1. Come on. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feasts of the Lord, mm -hmm. which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. Convocation. Uh. Put the definition of convocation up on the screen. 
Convocation. Y'all all right, IT. Y'all all right sometimes. You know that? You do good sometimes. All right. It says, an assembly of persons. It ain't say person. It said persons called together to a meeting. So read the verse again. Speak unto the children of Israel. Come on. And say unto them, concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. Mm -hmm. Even these are my feasts. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. Now, so now we about to, you just when you thought, oh, this is a basic class. I've heard this before. All right, let's go to the book of Acts. We're going to read Acts chapter 1, verse 1. We're going to read down a little bit because there's such a thing called distance, right? It's a thing called distance, right? You know, some brothers and sisters be like, man, I'm an hour away. I can't make it every, every month. All right. Bet. That just may be your weak in faith, right? Your weak in faith that that's, you know, but give me uh, Romans 10 and 17. You shouldn't stay that way. That's the thing about it. You may come in a certain way. We get that. But you're supposed to grow. You're supposed to grow. Romans 10, 17. Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. Come on. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. By the word of God. So if you're not seeing your faith build and realizing how important the Sabbath day the new moon, and so on and so on, is something is disconnecting. Give me 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. And these are things that we have to evaluate within ourselves, within our own walk. Okay? But the scriptures say your faith, the more you hear the word of God, your faith should grow. It should enhance. It should increase. There's been some brothers and sisters that drove two hours, three hours, four, and six on a consistent basis. Because they, they get it. They understand that I have to do this. But some, you know, they're not there yet. So hopefully, you know, you know, we put these classes up on YouTube. So hopefully they hear it. And they say, like, you know what? Dang, I didn't know that. Because sometimes people don't know. Who knows well, who Tala, Who knows where Tallahassee used to fellowship before we had a school? Uh, Mordecai, let me hear you. We used to fellowship in a house. Your house and Camino C. Yes, yes, this is true. I love you. Where else before that? Uh, oh. Joshua. Oh, yeah, it passed. It passed. Feast mode. Uh, Joshua. Uh, Orlando. In Orlando. Yes, he's right. In Orlando, Florida. That's a four-hour drive. But guess what? Who was down there? Bishop Kenai. Guess what? You get in the car. You take the key, right? You go like that. <clears throat> and then you got your gear shift. Boom, boom. You press reverse and get out the driveway, right? And then you put the GPS in. Doot, 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 doot. Put it in drive. And you go to school. That's what you do. Because that's what the Bible says to do. You understand? The wisdom's there. Get in the car. Go get the wisdom. And eventually, guess what? Hey, y'all go build there. After a certain amount of time, you stay there and you build there. And that's what we did. All praise to the most high. Now we have a school here. But you got to start somewhere, right? Right, right? Okay, all praise to the Father. What we got? Uh, 1 Peter 2, verse 1. Read that. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 2 and verse 1. Come on. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all, all evil speaking. You know what? We can't just rush through that. I'm not going to do a whole class on this, but we got to read that again because sometimes we'll just skip over all of those things that were listed. Read it again. Wherefore, laying aside all malice. All malice, because malice could be embedded in you. It could be hatred towards your brothers and sisters. It could be evil surmising towards your brothers and sisters, which can be preventing you from taking that next step. So God says right here, he says, you got to let that go. If you have any malice that's in you, you got to let that thing go. Read. And all guile. And all guile. Those are those who want the rebuttals. All God, remember, Christ was lied on, spit at, beaten, but no guile was found in his tongue. Why? Because he knew it was the will of God. He knew that he had to die to sit next to the right, uh, six, sit on the right hand next to the Father. He knew that had to take place. But a lot of us don't realize that, guess what? You're going to have to have trials to enter in. But we have the rebuttal. We have a lot of side speech, a lot of murmuring. And heresy, 
that takes place because we don't evaluate ourselves first. At the end of the day, somebody can walk up to you and punch you six times. At the end of the day, you still got to decide what you finna do next. You got to see if my next action going to be right. I know the Bible say lay hands on no man suddenly. So that ain't suddenly because he hit me six. <laughs> then, then the Bible says don't be angry with your brother without cause. I got a cause. So now I can put hands back on him. You understand? But you always have to think about your next action. Somebody can say something to you and you want to put hands on them suddenly, but you can't because the Bible says not to. Y'all with me? Read on. Wherefore, laying aside all malice. Come on. And all guile. And all guile, evil speaking, read. And hypocrisies. And hypocrisies. And hypocrisies. All right, because think about it. I know for a fact a lot of people everybody meets, you tell them you're an Israelite. You tell them that because you're happy about it. But do you live like an Israelite? Read. And envies. And envies. And envies. That happens a lot on the sister side. But some brothers deal with that thing too. All right, we're not to be envious of one another. Read. And all evil speakings. And all evil speakings. And all evil speakings. Because guess what? If you say it long enough and enough times, what's going to happen? You're going to start believing it. And that's how the evil eye, that root of bitterness starts springing up. Think about it. Uh, Esau told us that Christ was white for thousands of years. And it's hard to tell our people otherwise today. Just imagine that type of spirit that you're putting out constantly. Evil speaking. It's going to resonate in your spirit eventually. Read. Verse 2. Come on. As newborn babes. So we got to be newborn babes. We got to forget everything that we learned before we came in these doors. Come on. As newborn babes. Uh-huh. Desire the sincere milk of the word. We have to desire the sincere milk, the laws of God. How to deal with one another according to the scriptures. Read. That ye may grow thereby. That's the only way your faith is going to grow. The only way your faith is going to grow is if you put these things away. Now, let's go to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 1, verse 1. And we're going to read down. Acts chapter 1, verse 1. Acts chapter 1 and verse 1. Come on. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up. After that, he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. All right. So who wrote the book of Acts? Quick fire. Quick fire. Okay. Good job. Good job. All right. So he saved all of you. All right. Read on. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. Right. So Christ, he showed himself that he did, in fact, resurrect. Okay. Read. Being seen of them 40 days uh -huh. and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Read on. And being assembled together with them, com commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, uh -huh. but wait for the promise of the father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. Come on. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Not many days hence mm -hmm. when they therefore were come together. They asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Right, because we understood that uh, Ezekiel, he prophesied that thing, Ezekiel 37. All right, our redemption was prophesied all throughout the prophets. So we like, I think this is the time. All right, the Messiah is here. We do realize that he, he rose on the third day. This is him. So he asked the question, are we going to get the kingdom back? Read. And he said unto them. It is not for you to know the times or the seasons. Come on. Which the Father hath put in his own power. Read. But ye shall receive power. But after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, mm -hmm. and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem Bo and in all Judea. Both in Jerusalem and all Judea. Read. And in Samaria. And, and in Samaria. So Christ is telling you, you're going to be witness to the children of Israel. Jerusalem first to the Jew first. You understand? That's what it's talking about. And then to the Greek, then to the, the Gentiles, then to the northern kingdom. Read. And unto the uttermost part of the earth. Read. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. So he was translated, taken up by a chariot, all right, to sit on the right hand of the Father. Read. 
And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. So two big black angels, all right, stood by them in white apparel, read. Which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This, this same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. All right, so after Christ uh, was translated, all right, into heaven, an occurrence happened, all right? Watch this. Verse 12, then returned they unto Jerusalem from the Mount called Olive. All right, so they were at the Mount called Olive, and then they had to return to Jerusalem. Okay, watch this. Which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. Which is from Jerusalem, a what? A Sabbath day's journey. Took them a whole day. And they did it on what? Did they, was they in cars? No. It was on foot. Took them a whole day. Read. Verse 13. Come on. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room. So who was there when they fellowshiped together? Was it just the men? Read. Where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon Zelotes and Judas the brother of James. These all continue with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women. With who? With the women. Read. And Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. See that thing right there? That's a beautiful sight because they all believed. They all had this, the same mindset. They didn't care about how far it was. They understood that, hey, Christ told us what to do. He said return in Jerusalem. Okay. We got to wait on the Holy Spirit. And that's what Paul and the apostles did. They were traveling to these different countries, traveling all day, weeks at a time. No complaints because they had to fulfill the will of God. Okay? So, it's all about your, your faith level. Give me, um, anybody have something before I move on? Let me um, get, um, what is it? First Samuel chapter 20 and verse 25. Just to show you our ancestors' mindset when it came to the high holy days. We, we understood back in the days that keeping these high holy days was a way of life, not just a choice or something that's convenient. Because now a lot of our people make excuses because of the convenience of coming. Like, like the things that we make excuses for to miss the Sabbath, I heard somebody tell me, oh, it, it was raining, so I didn't want to come. Little simple stuff like that. But back in the days, read that for me. First Samuel chapter 20 and verse 25. Read. And the king sat upon his seat as at other times. Even upon a seat by the wall. Read. And Jonathan arose, and Abner sat by Saul's side, and David's place was empty. So this was one of the high holy days. This wasn't the Sabbath, but it was a new moon. And they're telling you that David's place was empty on a new moon. Read. Nevertheless, Saul spake not anything that day, for he thought something hath befallen him. Read. He is not clean. Listen to how Saul was thinking. Because David missed the new moon, he didn't say, well, maybe, you know, he just, he, he felt like doing it at home. Maybe him and his family have decided to do it by themselves. He said, he can't be clean. This brother must be in sin because he missed the new moon. And that's how serious God, how holy days is. If you miss the new moon, something's got to be wrong. You must be in sin. And that's how our ancestors understood it um, back in the days. All praise him. And that, uh, that uncleanness is going into the temple because, guess what? If we touch the dead body, we would be what? Unclean. We would be unclean. So right there, he's seen something. that had to be a significant, a significant occurrence on why David wouldn't be there. Because David, would, he was zealous of the law. He would have been there unless it was something serious. You understand? Now, I want to I wanna drop that. Um, the next one. Uh, reverence and worship. This is, a next, this is another thing. It's been said that brothers have been worshiping man, you understand, uh, worshiping leadership, worshiping leadership. That's also been said, that brothers have been worshiping leadership. Now let me ask you a question. Let me see who's, who's bright in here. Think about what I'm about to ask you. Check this out. Whew. I got something for you. Is it a sin to worship a leader? By a show of hands, who says yes? Oh, I'll be 
Either you do or you don't. Okay, put your hands down. Who says it is not a sin to worship leadership? Brothers are scared. Hey, you brothers right there, y'all better check your spirit because you indecisive, you lukewarm. You still ain't getting in. I'll try it one more time. Officers, help me out who don't raise their hand. Is it a sin to worship leaders? Raise the hand, Naquan. Raise the hand up. Okay. All right, hands down. Is it a sin? Wait, is it? How, what I say? Okay, who thinks it's not a sin to worship leadership? Gideon got his hand up, but his head down. <laughs> Darius, did you raise your hand on either? You got to raise your hand you on one. You have to choose. You got to choose one. You have to choose one. Just put up one or two. Go. Okay, one. All right. So what do we have to do, brothers? We got to go to the the scriptures. Let God be true. Here it goes. Boom. Give me a definition. It says reverence, honor or respect felt or shown. Okay. Profound, adoring, uh, a wed respect. Scroll down. A gesture of respect, the state of being revered, one held in reverence, used as a title or clergyman. Go ahead. Come on, come on, come on. Uh, To regard or treat with reverence. Can I get some synonyms? Synonyms. Adore. Deify, glorify, revere, venerate, worship. Hmm. Hmm. It says worship is a synonym for reverence. Who knew that? Who knew that? Nobody knew that? All right, so let's get some understanding on the word worship. Click. You click it. Ding. Okay. Uh, to honor or show reverence. Hold on a second. I think reverence... And worship are the same thing. Read it again. To honor or show reverence for as a divine being or supernatural power. To regard with great extravagant respect, honor, or devotion. All right. All right. So give me, give me Ecclesiasticus chapter 7 verse 29. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 7 and verse 29. Come on. Fear the Lord with all thy soul and reverence his priest. It says, fear the Lord with all your soul. Right? It says, fear the Lord with all your soul and do what? And reverence his priest. What does this mean? Mm, Nah, yeah, yeah, no. I want to hear somebody explain it. Because we're going to break this down to get some understanding. Uh, who's that? Soldier Simon. Uh, yes, sir. So he said, uh, he said, fear the Lord with all your soul. And um, so if you fear the Lord, you're going to reverence the men that he has set up before you as being your leaders. That's correct. There it is. So guess what? If somebody says brothers is worshiping their leaders, where's their mindset at? These dudes, these are niggas. These are niggas up here. I ain't got to listen to them because they're not of God. They're just men. You know, somebody said that to Moses, too. Somebody said that about Aaron, too. What happened to them? Huh? They got put to death. Why? Why? Huh? Ultimately, the root of it, they didn't fear God. That's what it is. They didn't fear God. That's why God killed them. Y'all think sometimes you think that God don't know your hearts. You just want to push it off and, and to act like it's the man. No, it ain't got nothing to do with the brothers and sisters sitting next to you. It has nothing to do with that. It's within you. And what's in you comes out. And you can mask it to make it look like something else. But God knows what it really is. 
Y'all with me? Well, all right. Where we was at just now? Uh, Sirach 7, verse 29. Read that again, and I want Acts 23. The book of Sirach, chapter 7 and verse 29. Come on. Fear the Lord with all thy soul, and reverence his priest. And reverence his priest. Can I see something real quick? Absolutely, as I find it. Hey, give quick. me a Baruch. Baruch chapter 1, reverse, reverse 19. Because our forefather did the same thing. You don't want to reverence the priest. You don't want to reverence the prophet. Read that real quick. Baruch chapter 1 and verse 19. Uh huh. Since the day that the Lord brought our forefathers out of the land of Egypt. And you you not reverencing the priest, the prophet, you doing that to God. Because we are not yet to do our own will. We doing the Lord's will. Read that. Onto this present day, uh -huh. we have been disobedient. You see that? That's the key. We have been disobedient. Come on. Unto the Lord our God. Read. And we have been neg ne negligent uh -huh. in not hearing his voice. Not hearing his voice. Now, read verse 21. Come on. Because the Lord is not talking to uh, us. He's not coming in a dream and talking to us. Nah. Come on. Verse 21. Read. Nevertheless, we have not hearkened unto the voice of the Lord our God. See that we have not hearkened to the voice of the Lord our God. Check this out. Uh -huh. According unto all the words of the prophets uh -huh. whom he sent unto us. See that? That's leadership. Being disobedient. That's it, Kev. Real quick. Uh, what I call Acts 23. Just start at verse 1. Watch this. Acts 23 and verse 1. Acts chapter 23 and verse 1. All right, watch this. And Paul, earnestly beholding the council, said, Men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. Come on. And the high priest Ananias commanded them that stood by him to smite him on the mouth. Uh huh. Then said Paul unto him, God, shall we smite thee? Thou wilt white it, excuse me, thou whited wall, for sittest thou to judge me after the law. And they commanded me to be smitten contrary to the law. Read. And they that stood by said, revilest thou God's high priest? You see that? He says, you're reviling God's high priest. The, the law says, revile not the gods. It says, revile not the gods. It's talking about the leaders. The leaders are referred to as the gods. So in this situation, it's like, hey, wait a second. You're reviling God's priests. It's obvious that Paul is a chosen vessel of the Lord. Right. When he read Acts 9, it said that he's a chosen vessel. But in this instance, they were what? They were reviling him. Now give me that in Exodus 15. We talked about it, but let's go to it. Watch this. Watch this. Exodus chapter 16 and verse 2. Come on. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. Come on. And the children of Israel said unto them, would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots and when we did eat bread to the full. For ye have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. I'm going to let y'all know something. It's not easy being a leader. I'm going to let you know that. You know why? doesn't matter what you do. It don't matter. You, for example, people may not like the way you sit. I can't stand the way he sit up there. It's like, well, well sh how do you want me to sit? You can't go about pleasing everybody. The only person you go about pleasing is who? The most high. Then you got some people say, uh, I don't, I see the leader, I see this leader. He's, he's like this with some people, but he's not like this with everybody. Well, maybe because they have another type of relationship. Does that make the leader wicked? No. Can Bishop have that one-on-one -on -one relationship with everybody? It'd be impossible. It'd be impossible. For example, I got certain relationships with people in the body because why? They've been through the test of time. Like Sister Tara, little Joshua, he's like my son, man. It started off in the house with us. So my relationship would be different, right? Rather than somebody just met two years ago. You understand what I'm saying? But when it comes to Israel, they don't, no, they just, let's tear them down by any means necessary. That's how Israel do. You understand? Now, jump down to verse 7. Come on. Verse 7. And in the morning, then ye shall see the glory of the Lord, for that he heareth your murmurings against the Lord. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. 
Didn't they just murmur against Moses in verses 2 and 3? Now read verse 7. Verse 7. And in the morning, then ye shall see the glory of the Lord, for that he heareth your murmurings against the Lord. So who are the murmurings against? They're not against the men. They're against the Most High. Because if you believe, you would believe that the Most High sent these men. And is man perfect? No. But that still don't mean God ain't send them. Did Jonah listen to God when he told him to go prophesy? No. But did God cho choose him? Absolutely. You just, who are we to speak against God's chosen? We can't. We can't. Finish that off. And what are we that ye murmur against us? Verse 8, and Moses said, this shall be when the Lord shall give you in the evening flesh to eat and in the morning bread to, to the full, for that the Lord heareth your murmurings, which ye murmur against him. And what are we? Your murmurings are not against us, but against the Lord. But against the Lord. Now, let's go back on topic. Give me Jeremiah 17 and 9. Okay. No, give me 1 Corinthians 11 and 1. Then I want Jeremiah 17 and 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 1. Come on. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. That's what it is. That's that worship and reverence right there. You follow. If the leader needs something to drink, what should you do? Why? You doing it for him? Who are you doing it for? There you go. Now, if the leader say, I need you to hold down this block and I'm going to give you a little something. Now, that's not, that's, that ain't following God. You understand? He's, he's, he's selling drugs and he's trying to get you to go down with him. Something totally different. You understand that, right? As long as they're not telling you to sin, as long as they're not abusing you, you understand? No, you, you are supposed to serve. That's how it's supposed to go. Thus saith the Lord. Remember in, uh, where's Hezekiah? Well, no, when do y'all find it? Uh, muzzle the ox in Corinthians. Give me that one. Give me muzzle the ox in Corinthians. Watch this. What time is it? Uh, I can't go there. So we're going we're gonna to close like this. Jeremiah 17 and 9. Why? Because I reverence the bishop. You understand? I'm, no, I'm not self-willed. I'm not going to teach my own class when the man who taught me is about to teach. Jeremiah 17 and 9. Come on. Yeah, 5. I'm sorry. Jeremiah. Yeah. Chapter 17 and verse 5. Watch this. Thus saith the Lord, cursed be the man that trusteth in man. Come on. And make it flesh his arm. Right, and make it flesh his arm. Remember, Paul said, be ye followers of me as I am a follower of Christ. It didn't say follow the man just because he's the man. That's what it's talking about with making flesh your arm. You're not listening to the word of God. You're literally just listening to the man. And trusting in man, yes, you will be cursed and he'll lead you down the wrong road. But this, it's got to be coming out of the Bible. You understand? All right. All right. Let's get ready for the bishop. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission, minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof, I-U-I-C, we deliver the truth.